The truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. Shout out to them people, 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 people. What's pop YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Dope Ass Panda and today I'm going to share with you guys how I created this super cute box braid bob on my client and I started off by parting her hair in half so whenever I do bobs I do like to do it in two separate sections so the back and then the front of the hair and today to define my parts I'm using the Black Panther Strong Edge Control and I've been using this in a lot of my videos right now. It's one of my favorite products to use to define my parts so that's why I've been using it so much and as always it will be linked in the description section for you guys. So I'm going to start out by doing box braids in the back section of my client's hair and I do have a box braid tutorial on my channel so if you would like to learn more about how I am attaching these braids or just how to do box braids in general make sure you guys check the description section and I'll link a couple videos in there for you that will help you guys achieve some super neat box braids. To complete this look, I used three packs of Expressions braiding hair that I cut into three sections. And remember, like this, these braids don't have to be super long um, because it is a bob, so that's why I was able to cut it into three sections. And this hair was actually pre-washed in apple cider vinegar and a water mixture because my client is allergic to the alkaline base coating that is found on most synthetic braiding hair. So I did film that and if you guys would like to see it, make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section if you guys would like to see how I pre-washed this hair. So once I've completed the box braids in the back section, I'm going to go ahead and start burning that section. And you just really want to make sure that if you do have a client with medium length hair, you want to make sure you pay close attention to where their hair stops in the braids because the last thing you want to do is burn your client's hair. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the lighter and I'm burning where I want the bob to stop. And I'm taking my fingers and pinching it as I'm burning it and that's just going to help make sure that um, the braid comes to a point where I'm burning it at and because these braids are thicker it is a lot harder to burn them so I burned them a little bit cut it and then I like went over it again just to make sure that it was truly sealed at the end when the braids are thinner as you're burning it the bottom half of the hair will kind of just fall off but when the braids are thicker it is a little harder to burn I feel like this part is really simple. You just want to make sure that you burn them all evenly so that um, once you're done, your bob kind of, you know, just hangs even. Um, obviously, like, if you wanted to do, like, an A-line or something, if you had a client with shorter hair, then it would be different. But um, this bob is pretty much going to be almost the same length all the way around. So this is what the back section looks like once it's completed and I love working in like two separate halves because you guys will realize that as you're burning the hair for your bob your fingertips start to feel like super raw so I like to like do the back section give my hand a break and then once I finish the top section I'll burn it again. So for the top section I'm doing the same thing I'm just doing rows going all the way up on each side and she did want a side part so I just pulled a couple extra braids over to the right side and that's pretty much it for the top section. Nothing super special about it. Before I actually burn these ends, um, I always kind of like roll the braids under and just check with my client and make sure it's the correct length that they want because remember like once you burn it, you cannot make this bob longer. You can always go shorter, but you can't go longer. Um, so I always kind of like 
show them an idea of what it's gonna look like before I start burning the top section. When I do bobs, I do not dip them, so I go straight on to putting the mousse on there, and they do not need to be dipped. If you dip them, it's going to take away the curl that goes underneath, and I specifically like the curl, but if your client wants them to loosen up a little bit, then you can. And then I'm going over that with some hairspray, and also I am spraying on a medicated anti-itch cream. It has olive oil, jojoba oil, shea butter, and tea tree oil. It's a 5-in-1 anti-itch growth conditioner that I like to spray on to moisturize, and then I'm just removing the rest of the mousse with the um, hairspray. And guys, this here is my finished look. I hope you guys like this tutorial. And let me know if you guys have any extra questions in the description section below. As always, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. And thank you guys so much for showing so much love to my hair page on Instagram. It's been slowly growing, and I'm super excited for that. And yeah, I hope to catch you guys in my next video. Bye. Guess who back in the house? Heels click clack and about. Fine, fresh, feminine, style to 11. I'm divine, so heavenly, gentlemen, sweat. Let's dance across the board, no doubt.